This is Chris Kopko for the William Bush Planetarium of Washington County Public Schools, and you found Skylights. Skylights is available on the Washington County Public Schools YouTube channel every month. Skylights will take you on a journey through the September night sky and will help you to locate some of the objects you can find with just your eyes or maybe a decent pair of binoculars. Although not essential for this podcast, it's always a good idea to have a map of the night sky handy to help you find your way around. One can be found in the column Our Friendly Skies on the Herald Mail's website or in the Record Herald at the beginning of the month or downloaded from the Tri-State Astronomers website found at tristateastronomers.org. A red flashlight is also always handy to have along to help you to be able to see your map without affecting your night vision too much. This podcast is intended to give a tour of the night sky at about 9 p.m. near the beginning of the month and closer to dusk by the end of the month. If you're using this podcast much later at night, the objects in the podcast will appear to be in different places due to the rotation of the Earth. Begin by looking up. Here you will find three bright stars that make a triangle. This triangle can be difficult to spot at first because there are a lot of little triangles you can find here in the sky, but think big and soon you'll have it. The bright blue star Lyra can be found high in the sky here and is often the easiest of the three stars to spot. From Lyra, look down a bit to the south where you'll find one bright star in between two dimmer stars. This is Altair, the second star of the summer triangle. Finally, look back up north and slightly east and here you'll find a T-shape in the sky. The top of the T is Deneb, the final star in the Summer Triangle. Though the Summer Triangle is bright and high in the sky, it's actually not a constellation. It's something called an asterism, which is a picture made out of stars in the sky that are actually part of one or more recognized constellations. In this case, the top of the T-shape where Deneb resides within the Summer Triangle is actually the tail of a swan named Cygnus. The body of the swan is the main body of the T, with the head at the bottom and the wings of the swan represented by the arms of the T. The star that represents the head of the swan, Alberio, is actually a double star, easily resolved in a small backyard telescope into the blue star and yellow star that our eye perceives as one individual star. Now go back to Altair, the bright star between two dimmer stars. This star marks the head of an eagle named Aquila, with the body of the bird stretching back to the southwest from here, and the wings of the eagle out to the sides. Finally, find that bright blue star Vega, which is the brightest star in the constellation Lyra the Harp. The strings of the harp can be found in a small parallelogram just off to the south of Vega. Within that parallelogram, between the two southernmost stars, you can use some binoculars or a small telescope to find the Ring Nebula, a planetary nebula that came from a red giant star, which our sun will become in a few billion years, that puffed off its outer layers, leaving behind the core of the star, which we call a white dwarf. Now let's head down to the northwest where we'll find a couple of the constellations of the ecliptic or the path that the sun appears to take through the sky. These are referred to as the signs of the zodiac, which many people are familiar with from horoscopes found in a newspaper or online. Though it can be fun to see what your horoscope says about your upcoming day, there is no scientific support for these predictions. Along the northwestern horizon, the first constellation of the zodiac you'll find just beginning to dip down below the horizon is Scorpius the Scorpion, with the bright red star Antares representing the eye of the Scorpion. Behind the Scorpion to the east, you'll find the teapot-shaped constellation Sagittarius. While most people see a teapot here, the actual constellation is really an archer. If you come out just after dark at the beginning of the month, you'll also find four planets in this region of the sky as well. Down along the horizon, shining brightly will be the planet Jupiter, though you'll have to have a clear view of the western horizon as it sets not too long after dusk. Just a little higher in the sky and a bit further south will be even brighter Venus, with both in the constellation Virgo the Maiden, and the waxing crescent moon joining these two planets on the evenings of September 2nd and September 3rd. Jupiter sinks lower toward the horizon each night this month until eventually being lost in the glare of the sun as it moves towards conjunction with the sun on September 26th. The other two planets that can be seen in the southwestern sky at the beginning of September, Mars and Saturn, will be visible all month along with Venus. Mars and Saturn both begin the month above Antares and Scorpius, but only Saturn stays there. 
Mars quickly moves into Ophiuchus and on to Sagittarius, ending the month near the spout of the teapot. Look for a large waxing crescent moon to join these two planets on the evening of September 8th. If you're looking to do some telescopic observations of these two planets, give it a try early in the month, as soon as it gets dark, to get the best views of Saturn's rings when it's at its highest point of the night before setting for the evening. Finally, check out the great square of Pegasus, the flying horse, found in the eastern sky as dusk turns to night. The square is made of four stars and represents the body of the horse. If you're having trouble locating it, look to the east of Altair, the bright star located between two dimmer stars, and alone here in the sky you'll find a small group of stars that almost looks like a dipper. This is not the big or little dipper, but is instead Delphinus the Dolphin. Try to imagine the old Miami Dolphins helmet logo here to picture it in the sky. The body of the dolphin points to the east and is pointed almost directly at the Great Square of Pegasus. Once you've found the Great Square of Pegasus, if you have fairly dark skies, you can find a small fuzzy patch to the north. This small fuzzy patch can be more clearly resolved in a telescope or even binoculars into a faint galaxy made of about a trillion stars. This is the Andromeda Galaxy, which in just a few short billion years will combine with our own Milky Way to form one giant elliptical galaxy. Aside from the stars, there are also some other interesting astronomical occurrences this September, with not one, but two eclipses happening this month. The first, an annular solar eclipse on the first, and the second, a penumbral lunar eclipse, which occurs on September 16th. However, since those of us in North America would have to do some serious traveling to see them, as neither are visible from any point in North America, we won't go into them here, though we are less than a year away from a fantastic total solar eclipse which does take a path through the continental United States. Another interesting astronomical occurrence will happen as it does every September, as the autumnal equinox occurs on September 22nd. The equinox occurs at the point in the Earth's orbit when the Sun will be directly overhead at midday for all points along the equator. Also known as the first day of fall, the hours of daylight and darkness will each be just about 12 hours long. The seasons change throughout the year due to the revolution of the Earth around the Sun and the tilt of the Earth on its axis. Check out Astronomy Cast episode 282 on seasons, found on iTunes or astronomycast.com. Finally, for those of you who like to keep track of what we put into space, there are multiple rocket launches of note this month. On September 8th, NASA's OSIRIS-REx is scheduled to launch aboard an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral. OSIRIS-REx is scheduled to reach asteroid Bennu in 2018 to collect surface samples to be brought back to Earth for study. Meanwhile, sometime late in September, a cargo delivery will be launched from Wallops Island, Virginia aboard an Antares rocket for delivery to the International Space Station. As for international launches, China will launch a Long March 2F rocket carrying a mini space station laboratory module at some point this month, while on September 23rd, the Russian government will launch a Soyuz rocket from Kazakhstan to deliver the next expedition crew to the International Space Station. Well, that's the night sky for September 2016. This has been Chris Kopko from the William Bush Planetarium for Skylights. Music for the podcast is provided by Walt and Jackie. Skylights can be found at Washington County Public Schools' YouTube channel every month.